So the title is 27 year old male and 26 year old female issues with sexy time. So me, the 27 year old male and my 26 year old female girlfriend have been together for over three years. During the first little while of our relationship, we couldn't keep our hands off each other. However, in the last two years, we haven't really been intimate at all. We had a lot of issues in our relationship and things got cold for a bit. I'd try to initiate sex and she'd turn me down every time. We spoke about it a lot and she said she thinks a blend of her contraception pill, messing up her hormones, work stress, us getting stoned every night, and her being generally unhappy about a lot of things in our relationship were the causes of the lack of intimacy. Wow. During this time, I took to doing things on my own when I went home, and this, is beca this became the norm. And I tried my hardest just not to think about sex while we hung out because it'd be a case of blue balls, which led me to becoming very sexually frustrated. It was easier to just stop thinking about it than deal with the mm -hmm. feelings of rejection, frustration, and insecurity, etc. It got to a point where I'd guess we got intimate less than 20 times in two years, over half of our relationship. However, we've worked on a lot, and now we're way closer than we've ever been and can communicate a lot better. We've completely cut out weed and are in different jobs. So now her sex drive is coming back a lot stronger and she's been coming on to me a lot more. However, we went sexless for so long that now I tend not to think about it at all, and I've mm. almost completely shut off sexually, and when she comes on to me, I just can't be bothered, or I'm just not in the mood hardly ever. Here and there, I'll still do things on my own when I go back to my place, but I'm almost entirely disinterested in actually having sex. I want to want it, but I just don't. When I just try to appease her, I can't stay hard and I'm just generally distracted and just not into it, which is causing her to feel insecure. And she believes I think she's ugly or something. She's Ugh. gained a bit of weight since we first met and she believes it's related to that. Despite my attempts to reassure her that is not the case. It was just so much easier to load up Pornhub and do my own thing with a lot less effort. And I just had to please myself for the longest time that thinking about actually having sex with another person is just so much work and effort. Despite my sex drive before was quite high. I think the sexless relationship has just made me lazy. Why are things like this now? Do you think there's any way for us to go back to normal? How can we fix this? It's very frustrating for both of us. And she said she's happy to be patient with me like I was with mm -hmm. her but I can tell it bothers her. But yeah, any help and advice on how we can try and fix things would be really appreciated. Wow. There's a lot going on there. A lot, which is the detail is really helpful. One, I want to highlight that I feel like this is a really strong couple, right? To have so many mm. issues and feel so disconnected and all of these barriers. And then they work through so many of these barriers and they're doing mm. much better for the most part, obviously, minus this part, but... I, I think overall, they have a lot going for them, which mm. I think can provide some hope and them navigating and figuring out this issue too. Sure. Yeah. They've already overcome a lot. It sounds like they've, and they were able to articulate what was getting in the way yeah. and to kind of like piggyback off of the last scenario that you shared, Victoria, she does bring up hormonal birth control among several other things. Right. And he doesn't mention if she went back on birth control or changed her birth control. That's not indicated here, but mm -hmm. it's interesting that if they worked on all those other areas of their relationship and the birth control didn't change, if that was, was that really the barrier then? I don't know. Right. Right. Just curious about that. So one, I feel like the first thing that comes to mind and I was deaf, I would definitely recommend a large break from pornography, right, to cut out that that ease of having an orgasm, right, to try to get more in touch mm -hmm. with his relationship, right? I'm not saying he has to cut that out forever or that pornography is the entire issue, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it could be making it easier for him to avoid sex. And I can see why he would be avoiding it from all of that rejection, right? After a while, I feel like there's just this defense mechanism to just be, like, averse, to mm -hmm. sex or pleasure, right? Yeah. I, we've talked about conditioning and how 
that's a theory that comes up a lot with why certain things really turn us on and why other things turn us off. And if you are, if your neuro pathway is following a certain path over and over again, meaning there's no partner sex, but there's pornography and masturbation, and you just keep following that path over years without much partner sex happening, that really becomes a strong association potentially that that is what you find most arousing. Mm -hmm. That's one, one theory of that, but there's a few things here Mm -hmm. that make me wonder. I wouldn't say this is a classic case of pornography addiction because he kind of says like here and there, I still do it. But during the time that our relationship was sexless, he just took care of himself that it his way it was so easy to just fire up Pornhub and get it get it over with and right. there are some other warning signs that I would be looking for if I was concerned there was a pornography addiction issue like you know a lot of pornography use or for prolonged periods of time um, the constant seeking searching wanting to find just the next video or the next image that is yeah. arousing. Um, so that search keeps going and going and going before somebody finally climaxes. Those can be some warning signs, but one warning, potential warning sign is erectile dysfunction, mm-hmm. which he says he has a hard time staying hard. Mm. So but there's not a very obvious, I think, issue here, but it does make me wonder because if partner sex just feels like way too much effort and work that's because it is more effort and work than the super normal as the research calls it stimuli of pornography right there's it's so highly stimulating and arousing unlike anything you find in the natural world right so when you're in the natural world it's not going to give you that same level of stimulation. Partner sex is not going to be able to offer that in that way. So I agree with you that yeah. step one, like just try cutting out porn for 90 days and see if that alters your libido, yeah. your erections. See, I mean, do a little experiment. That could be one easy way to see if that's a contributing factor. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I also wonder, because the erectile dysfunction could be from anxiety, right? It could be from the porn. It could mm. be from anxiety, right? After experiencing so much rejection for so long, right? Like the idea of initiation or something starting to happen could create this anxiety, which, mm. again, impacts erections, How right? How could it not, right? Yeah, exactly. I think, that, I think couples feel a lot of anxiety reapproaching their sexual relationship if they haven't been sexual with each other for lengthy periods of time. It just feels like a lot of pressure. Right. I agree. So take it slow, right? Like don't have the end goal be like penile penetration with orgasm, right? Just have the goal of enjoying each other, having some pleasure and seeing where it takes you. If it doesn't take Mm -hmm. you there, that's okay. You got to enjoy time with your partner, maybe had some pleasurable kissing or touching or cuddling and you can build off of that, right? Like we don't have to go straight for the the goal line. (laughs) Yeah. I would be better off in most cases, not doing that. Like we could all benefit from that, just not being a a rush to the finish line and enjoying the process. So I agree with that completely. I also wonder if he might be a responsive desire type Yes. Um, Because he's kind of saying things like, you know, I just don't really ever want sex. Um, He is saying he used to have a high sex drive. I don't know exactly what that means. That means when they were sexually active Mm -hmm. early in the relationship, or is he thinking about his porn use? That's why he's saying he had a high sex drive. Um, But... You know, that your your desire type can evolve over time. It's not something that's like fixed. So he might be in a place where he's a responsive desire type. We tend to associate that more with women, but any person can have that desire type. So what does that mean? Do you want to, I'm welcome to 
share it, Victoria. No, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing I, all the I talking. Like okay. This is like your favorite it's, aspect of talking of about favorites. sex. So, exactly. So I feel like that passion is going to come through get, for you. So I get very excited over responsive yeah. desire types because the common misconception for somebody who is a responsive desire type is that they, they think they're broken. Mm -hmm. They think they have no sex drive. Um, why is my partner always initiating and I never think to initiate or I never just spontaneously feel like I'm in the mood and mm -hmm. there's so much shame and insecurity tied to that that I just really love talking about this to kind of free people and liberate people there's nothing wrong with you you're not broken some people feel desire in response to pleasure so first something pleasurable needs to be happening that could be physical sensations, maybe beginning to have some sort of pleasurable touch or kissing or something like that. It could be that you're just in a really pleasurable state of mind, whatever that looks like for you. Having for Some people, it's just having a really nice conversation with their partner or doing something fun together. You have to be feeling the pleasure first and then the desire will follow, kind mm -hmm. of comes along after. So if you're wondering if you might be a responsive desire type, ask yourself like, okay, when I do start to have sex or that ball gets rolling, do I then start to feel it? And then the arousal kicks in and then I'm like, oh, okay, this is great. I'm, now I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying it. He could be a responsive desire type. I, you know, I am a little worried about the struggling with the erection. Like even once the ball gets rolling, it sounds like, not that the erection is everything. You can feel arousal. You can feel yeah. mental desire. And sometimes your body is not cooperating. Absolutely. Whether that's lubrication for a vagina or vulva or erection for a penis. Like you might be there mentally and like really into it. And sometimes your our bodies are not in alignment. And that is very common and normal too. So just something else to consider that might be going on with this guy. Yeah. I think these are those are good points, right? So porn, anxiety, responsive desire, like things to consider and think about navigating yes. that. Yeah. And it just keeps going, <laughs> just keeps going. And, you know, long-term relationships, they've been together three years, okay? A lot, sounds like a lot has happened in those three years, you know, some yeah. ups and downs and whatnot, and they're in a pretty good spot emotionally, but... You know, that familiarity and comfortability and that feeling at home with someone doesn't necessarily ignite a flame, right? Those, those two aspects of a relationship dynamic can, can kind of be at odds with each other. If you're always comfortable and at home, you don't really feel the, the, the thrill. So they also might need to just consider what's going on in their relationship to maybe light a little fire you know, do something new and different and exciting together, have some new experiences. Um, make sure you're setting aside the time for pleasure with each other. There are practices that you have to put into play mm -hmm. to sustain an erotic relationship with a long-term partner. It is effort. It is Absolutely. intention. So if he's like, oh, it just feels like so much work. Well, that's that's kind of what it is. I mean, I don't like to use the word work because it just kind of has a negative connotation attached to it. But it's effort. Yeah. It's intention. It's yeah. it's prioritizing that. So they might need to take a look at like what's the dynamics in our day to day life, and can we try to implement some strategies to create some novelty together? Absolutely. And you know, I was just thinking too, if it's so much work. I also wonder if he's enjoying sex, like if it really is pleasurable for him, mm -hmm. right? I have worked with people before that they initiate, they put in all of the effort, right? And their partner, male or female, can be described as a pillow princess, <laughs> right? And that's not fun because then you don't feel desired, right? Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work if your partner, again, male or female is a pillow princess, you know, it should be a give and take. You both should feel desired, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe there needs to be conversation around the quality of their sex and their sex life as well. 
And if they're kind of reconnecting after a long time, they might be feeling like they're starting from square one. Like, yeah. what is our norm? I don't know. We haven't had a norm in a while. And right. so, yeah, I think these are all like, there's so many different, so many layers, layers here, so much room and also tons of room for potential and growth. Yeah. Because of that, there's just, it's a, a very workable situation. And so I hope that this couple finds, finds their solution to, to this struggle. And by the way, we have uh, videos linked in the description box mm -hmm. that talk about, is your sex drive normal? We talk about the desire types there. We also have two videos about um, pornography addiction and pornography addiction recovery that are linked below. And what's the other one we were just talking about? The magnificent sex, maybe? <laughs> oh! Because of having a pleasurable sex life? Uh, fizzle to sizzle. I was thinking oh, the oh, oh. Uh, reignite the flame in your relationship. We have that one also. <laughs> but that's a great one, too. Um, the magnificent sex, your best sex life. Uh, it's not linked below, but I can go back and link that one. Great. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious what other people would say about this particular couple, what advice that they would give or what they think is the driving factor for this gentleman. Yes, I agree with that question. What do you think it is? You've posed a whole multitude oh. of possibilities here, but oh, right. what do you think is really going on?